Hey crafters, we're so close to being done with Belle. I wanna go ahead and get started on this drill with me and tell you about our Scotland trip. But before we do that, in the last video, we did the very nice Belle's Rose and I finished up the teacup. I wasn't able to fully finish in the video, but I told you I would show you in the start of the next one. So the teacup is fully done. Since then, I've also finished her banner, her dress, and the top of her body. The only things left are her candle, her face, and her hair. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is the candle in a drill with me, and maybe either her face or her hair, maybe time lapse it. I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle that, but Belle will be done within a day or two of this video. Now the candlestick is actually quite long on the of the diamond painting. It's it's a little too long to show it all on camera at one time. Really zoomed in how I like it. So I'm gonna do the top part of the flame and the candlesticks, and then try to focus on the bottom part of the base. Let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna get started on the flames. I'll show you the DMCs, tell you the numbers, how I really like doing it. And in the bottom part of the candlestick, if you notice, it's actually the same, same symbols, same letters, same colors. I'll probably just keep chatting instead of stopping, telling you the DMC number, the symbol, stop, go, stop, go. I'll just quick, quick, go quickly through that. But I'm gonna start at the top, work my way down with N which is DMC 744. Oh, let me get that on there. And it's a really nice yellow. We have a little bit of better lighting today, so you can see a nice, almost like a, a light spring, not super bright yellow, but very fitting for this. So in the last video, I talked to you about Thanksgiving, which Glad that's done and over with. We can move on to the next holiday that we're trying to get everything ready for Christmas. But before Thanksgiving, we had a really nice family trip to Scotland and I just wanted to talk to you about it while I was drilling. We previously this year went to Ireland and we really enjoyed our time there. And I know Scotland and Ireland are very different, but we wanted to try and um, pop over to Scotland at some point since we were in Ireland and it worked out that now in November was the earliest we could get there. And it was really nice. I enjoyed my time there. And surprisingly, the parts that I thought I would like the most ended up being what I liked the least and vice versa. So um, we had an early morning flight, not, not too early morning, I think nine or 10 a.m. I don't remember to get there. But, you know, with three kids, two adults, we were all kind of quickly rushing to get up in the morning, out of the door. And we got to the airport. Everything was totally fine. We packed light. We did one bag for all of us. Um, so check-in was easy and a breeze. One thing they have here in Frankfurt is they have like family check-in lines in family areas. So you go to the checkout encounter and the one we were at had like a little makeshift kids plane. So while you're checking in, your kids can spin the wheel and look at the gadgets and it keeps them really occupied, entertained. It's wonderful. Those ends went so quick. Now I'm going to do K, which is DMC 742. Not that only two numbers off from the other one, but this is more orange. Not really any yellow in this, this shade. So the flight was okay. The baby uh, was entertained most of the time. He was kind of kicking the seat in front of him. I felt horrible about that. I was trying to get him to stop. He did stop, fell asleep. So it's an hour and a half flight and really for an hour and 15 minutes, it was relaxing and the kids were wonderful on their tablets, calm. We got there, we got our rental car, it took a bit of time and then we really went and headed into the city it was a little bit of a longer drive than I thought from the airport to the city, but that was absolutely no big deal for me because my husband was the one driving and it is right-hand drive there. So, you know, as the passenger, I sit on the left-hand side of the car and he's driving on the other side of the road. For me, it's just too stressful. So he 
does that whenever we go to a country that has like right hand drive, left hand, uh, left side for the passenger, he takes on that task. And I'm very thankful because I feel like I would just mess up and no, driving like that is not for me. We went to Edinburgh and this is the beautiful city. I really expected myself to have the best time there and I didn't. The city was, well, well, I liked it. Let me start by saying that. I really, I liked it. But the city was really crowded. There was a lot of traffic and construction going on where we were staying. We stayed in Old Town Edinburgh. Um, so going anywhere, even just three streets over, was a 30-minute drive. Parking everywhere was incredibly expensive. I think the cheapest we were doing was 17 British pounds a day. And then, um, so it's almost like a city built on top of the city. Like you have these really older medieval streets and then another level up above it. So Google had a really hard time even telling us where to go for driving. And then we were kind of expecting this old town charm, but it was every other store was either souvenirs or discount cashmere. Souvenirs, discount cashmere, souvenir, the whole block. So we didn't really get that old time immersed feel like you're learning about the culture feeling. And we struggled, we couldn't find our hotel, we couldn't find the parking. So after we left the airport and we actually got downtown, it was a very stressful hour. So by the time we check into our hotel, we're like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't wanna go back out, I need to chill out for a bit. We're gonna do J DMC 741, and this is more of a pumpkin orange. Darker than the, the other symbol, which is just one DMC off. After a few hours of just relaxing in the hotel room, we decided to venture out. We were staying really close to the new Edinburgh Christmas Market, and we wanted to check it out, and we wanted to have some delicious local food. So we got everybody ready, bundled them all up, because it was cold and rainy, but really no different than Germany. We head down the street, and there was a fish and chips place, so it's like, let's go here. It's a pub with fish and chips, we're gonna check it out. And we get there, we sit down. Um, I start to order and this is where we run into a problem. So there are some very strict rules. Oh, I spilled drills. There are some very strict rules in Scotland about if your establishment serves alcohol, um, whether kids can be inside or not. And I get it, I totally get it. But if it's a restaurant that serves alcohol, then they explained to me there's different liquor licenses. And it's your license can be based on the age of children you can send, all of this stuff. It was really confusing. And it, it just, it didn't feel like a rather welcoming place for a family. Now we ended up at this fish and chips place. They explained all of this to us. They were asking the ages of our kids, walking back and forth. Finally, they went to the owner and just said, they're gonna be purchasing these items. Can they stay? And the thing is, they asked me specifically if the baby, the two-year-old, was old enough to eat his, to order a meal and eat his own meal. I guess that's part of the thing. If for some licenses, or I, gosh, I don't even know, guys. For some level, if the baby is not old enough to order a meal off the menu and eat it, then you were not allowed, the, the baby is not permitted in the restaurant if alcohol is being served. This was all being explained to me, and I'll be honest, it was ex being explained to me and I kind of struggled to understand, even though it was English. Um, and I'm like, this is really confusing. We'll get out of here. I really don't mean to cause any, any trouble. And they're like, no, it's okay. They said that you can stay. And I'm like, thank you. But it was, you know, stressful. Our whole first night there, we didn't feel really that comfortable. We quickly rushed through food. And we just tried to get out of there. Now, that was the closest restaurant to our hotel. And we didn't want to feel like we would have to be stuck in a hotel during room service. So we were bummed out. And we kept walking and we went to the Christmas market. And I'm really thankful that we didn't throw in the towel 
that we went to the Christmas market because of course we had a wonderful time there. It was interesting because it was modeled after a German Christmas market. Okay, next I'm gonna do 790, the circle one, and this is a very, very orange to continue working on our flame. So at the Christmas market, it was advertising German glue vine, German beer, German bratwurst, and we uh, did a very little bit of shopping. I bought a small wooden Christmas tree decorative piece that's now sitting on our dining room table. And this is what it looks like. Super orange. Um, we did buy a lot of treats and the traditional like gingerbread German cookies, some chocolates, um, cider, glue vine, just kind of fun stuff like that. And they had rides and games for kids. So that's actually what we did for the rest of the evening. The kids got to ride on like a Christmas train and ride in swings and ride on the carousel. And at that point in the day, we really needed that because it was a positive experience. It was something we were doing with the kids. Everything up until that point had been stressful and unfortunate because we didn't understand the rules. We weren't really expecting Scotland to be so difficult to travel around, but this brought us back to a really positive space where we're really happy for that. And um, one moment at the Christmas market, I was I walked up to a train, a train ride, to ask if the the girls would be uh, tall enough to ride, like if they were old enough or tall enough to ride it by themselves. Because at that point in the night, me and my husband were so tired, the baby was already asleep in the stroller, neither one of us wanted to ride. Plus when it's like six British pounds per ticket, I'd rather only buy two tickets than three. And I just asked the gentleman, and with the Scottish accent, he replies back, Bianya, Bianya. And I'm like, excuse me? He's like, Bianya. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, can you repeat it again? <laughs> and he goes, behind ya. And I'm like, I am so sorry. I turn around. There is the height chart behind me. I'm like, I am so sorry. I, I didn't understand. I really struggled to understand the Scottish accent. And then I felt so silly, absolutely so silly that I couldn't even get it. And he was just so clearly trying to be incredibly polite. I will say that um, on our trip, we ran into very many super nice, polite people. Um, one second, I need to... I have drills holding the camera up. Oh, there's my hand. And I need to get one of the drills holding the camera up. And it was, I was embarrassed. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And by the way, they were, they were tall enough. They got to ride on their own. And, and, um, and that really, it, our evening was really nice. Now, one thing I noticed, the Christmas markets were not, busy at all. You got to walk on every ride. You never had to wait in line to buy anything or even to get food. And my husband was later telling me he was reading a lot of complaints about Indenburg and how they're not a fan of this new Christmas market they've started. And there are some locals that really feel that it's taking a little bit of their identity away by having a German Christmas market. And I'm like, my gosh, I had no idea all of this. Um, but it explained why the Christmas market was almost empty. I'm gonna do this um, sunrise symbol next. But we ended our first night on a positive note. And you know, that was the roughest time we had the whole time in Scotland. I, um, from there, I just felt really great about our trip. It's just, I thought Indenburg was gonna be the best part of our trip and it turned out to be the most stressful part. The next day, um, we did all of our tourist sightseeing stuff. We went to the Indenburg Castle, which my husband and I really enjoyed. The way it's set up, it's this beautiful castle at the top of a hill and they have like these mini museums inside. 
and it was great. It was informative and we really enjoyed it. So you buy a ticket to the castle, but you know, there's a cafe inside, all these little mini museums. So you could spend your whole day just going around in this place and checking out all the different stuff they had. We, my husband and I really enjoyed it. Our kids enjoyed parts of it, like they saw a cannon. They thought that was really cool. And in some of the museums, they liked looking at the different writing for the items on display. And in school, they're starting to word, learn like sight words and trying to put letters together to read. So it was really sweet to see them in the museum trying to read and being like, oh, I've seen this word at school and talking about their teacher. So it was a much better day and we're really glad for it. Uh, after the castle, we went and got lunch. And if you ever have one of those moments where you're just walking around, don't really have anything planned, but the perfect thing comes up and happens to you. So that's kind of how it was for us. So we went to lunch and decided we were gonna walk back to our hotel. And change in Jill's again. I'm gonna do 921 here, the diamond shape. And I'm just gonna pick them out. I'm not gonna put them on the tray, there's so few. So as we're walking back to our hotel, we walk by the Scottish National Museum. I'm not sure if I'm saying the correct, if there's a, a correct, that's a correct title or if it was like Scottish Archaeology National Museum, something like that. And we just thought, you know what, let's go check this out. Let's see how much a ticket is. We go in and it turns out this entire museum is free. <coughs> Sorry. Um, which we were really intrigued by like, oh, okay, you know what, let's just go and check out what they have here. We went to kind of the directory and we kept finding really cool stuff. They had an entire section for Egypt, entire section for Scottish history, an entire section for technology. And we're thinking, wow, this is great. The girls have asked questions about Egypt and the baby would love technology. Let's go check it out. And we spent hours in this museum. It's not something we knew about. It's not something we planned to go into. We were just gonna go home uh, back to the hotel because we were so tired and instead we were staying there. And it's all these different hands-on activities. Perfect for children, very educational. They didn't want to leave. The last thing we did was the Egyptian uh, wing of the museum. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where they're, they're in a museum and they're learning and they were so upset to leave, but mommy and daddy were very, very tired. And I think their favorite thing was um, space. They had an exhibit about space and the stars and how the solar system was made and our planets. And never would I have thought that they would be as really questionative and wanting to know as much as I saw that day. And it was so sweet to see their children like that. Three, three, two is the next one I'm gonna do. And it's this X with the bottom part filled in. We'll do these three lines and then are these four? One, two, three, four. I'll move on to the T. But you know, it was the end of the day at that point. The kids were starting to get cranky. It was a lot of walking. Um, with our hotel and with the city, the way it ended up being is most places do not have parking. So it is very much a walking city. And we parked our car in a lot that was far away from where we were staying. And it just made sense to not walk to the car, drive us a little bit, walk and park the car, drive back. It was probably less walking than we, when we just walked everywhere. Um, there was a knitting shop that I wanted to try and get to, but it was just a little too far out of the city. I couldn't, I couldn't make it. But we really, that second day, enjoyed our time and um, the most random thing happened um, that night they were showing oh what is it uh, back to the future they're showing back to the future on TV and I kind of reached this moment where I'm like mommy is tired of cartoons I want to watch this and the kids are like 
oh, okay. And then like five minutes in, they're asking questions. And they're like, oh, what's his name? Oh, he travels through time. And it was sweet because my kids were actually really into it. And we all were in the hotel and we watched Back to the Future together and went to sleep. And that was our Edinburgh trip. Now, it really felt like there was so much to do. If we wanted to do the, um, it's called like the Royal Mile or something like that, like a mile of their old town area with different exhibits and museums and historical monuments and beautiful churches that you could check out. But there was gonna be no way we would have the time to do all of that. It's like you would need five days at least just to explore the city of Edinburgh. Next, I'm gonna do T, which is DMC 775. Ooh, I put too much on my tray, so it's a little hard to shake them out into lines. This is like a very light ice blue. For some reason, it always reminds me of toothpaste or frozen. Um, after that, it was technically our third day there, and we left Edinburgh, and we drove up to, I'm gonna say this incorrectly, and I, should have looked like Bunchru. Uh, Bunchru, Bunchru. It's an area close to Loch Ness. And we decided that we wanted to go and we told the kids all about the Loch Ness monster and how we were going to go try and find this dinosaur. And they were very excited about it. But we stayed a, a little bit of distance away. My husband found, and I'll have to put a picture in, but he found this gorgeous gorgeous hotel that was inside a castle. Here is the beautiful castle that we stayed in. It's been turned into a hotel and it is right on the water. It's absolutely gorgeous. We stayed in a family room that is around the back and kind of a built on extra annex that they did. So we had our own door in and out. It was separate from the rest of the hotel and if our kids were loud, it wasn't a big deal. And we he as a as a surprise, he booked our stay there and it was amazing. They have a family room which is kind of is attached to the castle, but you have to walk outside of the back exit, almost like a, a later on added annex kind of area. And we he booked that room, so we had plenty of room, plenty of space for all five of us, and it was right on the water, directly on the water, and we had a beautiful view. And that was a really nice surprise that he had done. And they have these gorgeous castles and these that have been changed into bed and breakfast. They're all over, they're absolutely gorgeous, and they're cheaper. They're much cheaper than staying in a name brand hotel. So that was a lot of fun, and when we were there, like our first night, we just kind of checked in, and the second morning we wake up and we have breakfast through the castle, it's included in the rate, but it is so fancy, guys. I'm telling you, we walked in tablecloths, three forks, three spoons, like all these knives. You know what I'm talking about. Cloth, like linen napkins. And the first thing I think of is like, oh my gosh, my kids are gonna ruin all of this. And I'm trying so hard. Like everyone's there having breakfast. And I'm like, guys, guys, you put your napkin, uh, put your napkin in your lap and you know, try, please, you know, don't be too loud. Please don't scream. And then like, I've got five-year-olds. So they're telling jokes about farts or whatever. And I'm like, oh no, please not here, not here. It was just so fancy that um, I was so a, a little out of my comfort zone. Also, because I've told you, I go everywhere in my Target and Walmart uh, wardrobe and everyone there was just dressed very nice. But after breakfast, we got in the car and we told the girls all about the Loch Ness Monster and how we're going to go try and find this dinosaur. And they were really excited. We're, we drove down to Loch Ness and we're looking at this massive, beautiful um, body of water. And they're looking out the window trying to see the dinosaur. And it was just really a fun, fun morning and afternoon with them just being really excited with everything we're doing. And we spent a lot of time that day in the car, but they were so excited to try and find Nessie. 
that it, it worked out well. Um, since it was off season, there were not many places that were still open. So we wanted to try and go to this place called Nessie Land, but it was closed. They had another one that was still open in November, but um, based on the reviews, it didn't look like it was really kind of geared towards kids while Nessie Land was. So we didn't pop in. Um, when we were over there, we checked out a beautiful castle on the water and um, I went to a place called Loch Ness Knitting, which was amazing to see and really inspirational. And I hope to go back. I bought some knitting from there and I need to do a video, but it is in a woman's home and she does a zero waste knitting uh, yarn dyeing company. And it's really the whole community that works together to help support her in this where the items that she uses to make the dye from are either non-compostable non fruits and vegetables from the local cafe or different items from her neighbor's garden. And they all come together, they deliver her these products, she cooks them to get the color out and then she dyes the yarn. And it's yarn from the local you know, wool that she buys and, and, and sheeps, and you can find even information about the different wool that she has. And I was really blown away. Um, I took like a one minute video, and maybe I'll, I'll put it online, but she was standing right there while I was talking, and I'm like, wow, I really admire what her and her community are doing. And then I needed to say it again on a YouTube, and I'm stumbling all over myself as I'm trying to talk, and she was very kind. She's like, it's okay, it's okay, try again. <laughs> but I popped into there. I got three skeins of fingering weight yarn, or maybe it was DK, I'll have to look. Uh, so that'll be an exciting project coming up soon. And, oh, here, let me take a break. How does it look on camera? It looks great. We have our candlesticks and our flames done. I'm going to move the camera to go down to the base. So one second. Okay, so I move the camera and since these are the exact same DMCs that I really use for the flame and the bottom part of the candle holder, I'm just gonna quickly move through them while I'm chatting. And I, uh, let me realign these white drills because my white drills, I need to get a drill grinder. See, they're all really sticky right now. And I gotta figure that all out. But um, I popped into Loch Ness Knitting and I was really glad that I did. It was actually my husband that was really supporting me, really trying to push me into going, not push me in a negative sense, but he was being supportive of saying, hey, it's okay, the kids are having a great time, they can sit in the car for a little bit, why don't you go check out a yarn place, kind of get something special. And with him being so supportive of it, I did go. And I think I was there for maybe 20 minutes. I purchased some yarn, a nice project bag, and I came back into the car. It was one of those things where the kids were looking at something on a tablet and the baby was asleep. They probably didn't even notice that mommy was gone. And um, we went back to the hotel. And I think that was one of the nights that we just got sandwiches from the grocery store and just hung out and had a nice evening, watched some Scottish TV kind of deal. Uh, one thing that we were not expecting in Scotland, how expensive everything was going to be. Now we knew on the British pound it was gonna be more, but things cost even more than we had planned on them costing. So taking a night to just eat sandwiches and chips was pretty good. I mean, we would stop for lunch somewhere, and we'd get two meals for the adults, two kids' meals, which someplace didn't have a kids' menu, so you're ordering off the standard menu, and then the baby would kind of share one of the meals with the girls. Um, and then you add in five drinks, which would all be three or four or five British pounds each, and then it's like, bam! We just spent 75 pounds on lunch. It was expensive. And and one thing we noticed, like the gas station culture, like in the US, you go on a road trip, there's gas stations every so many miles. You pop in, you can get a snack. 
we once we got outside of the main cities that gas station culture just didn't exist so if we wanted to stop for lunch we were we were stopping at like a bed and breakfast and you were paying quite high rates for lunch so something we didn't plan on we enjoyed we really liked seeing these quaint little places and had some nice meals that were all delicious but you know every time that bill came I was like, oh, goodness. So I'm going to fill in N right now. And uh, we stayed two days at this castle. And Bun Bunchu, Bunchu, it was really gorgeous. Um, I'll put a picture in. If I didn't already say that, I'm going to try and remember. I will put a picture in. And it was just peaceful. It was extremely quiet. And that was actually my favorite part of the trip. Um, being there, being at that hotel, being up near uh, Loch Ness, and kind of trying to do the whole joy and fun with the kids and the Loch Ness monster. Um, that was my my highlight and yeah, that was uh, two days there. And then we decided we wanted to be really adventurous. So Loch Ness is on the eastern part of the Scottish shore. We decided to drive all the way to the island of Skye in one day to the western side. And I don't know much about the island of Skye, but my husband was telling me as we were driving that up until the mid 90s, the only way to really reach this area was through a ferry. And in the mid 90s, they put in a large bridge, making you know tourism um, a lot more popular in the area. And it was really cool. It was a very quaint, cozy area. And all where we were at, I don't remember the name of the hotel, um, but it was another kind of like bed and breakfast style hotel. Um, it was all like locally supported businesses. Like you'd go into one business and do some shopping and you would see they're advertising the other businesses, the other artists in the area, like a community where everyone's really come together. And I enjoyed that. They even had this book and I didn't save it but it is a published book that they do every year where they talk about the local artists and all of the shops in the area. So if you're looking for a painting, you know, you have a section of this book of all the painters where you can find their shop, how you can get in touch with them, where you can see samples of their work and so on. Um, glass making and jewelry artists. I didn't see any yarn dyers, but um, I did see a yarn shop, which wasn't open when we passed through, but um, it just seems really cool. Everyone's helping everyone out. Let me put these up, get another color. And we only did the Island of Sky for one night. So it was really adventurous of us. We drove all the way over, and then the next day we drove from Sky all the way down to really just right outside of Edinburgh. Um, so we then, oh, that's a 310 that I missed. We then um, spent the night, I think we just did a, a Hilton or a Doubletree right outside. Oh, how did I do that? I got two and then I messed it up. Right outside of Edinburgh that way, the next day, we had a late flight, and we were kind of already in the town, and we didn't have to rush in the morning. But that was another thing. Once we got out of the car, we had been driving all day, mostly, so we just had an easy night in the hotel, and I think when I, yeah, when I turned on the hotel, uh, Harry Potter was on. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, and that's what we watched, and then everyone fell asleep. So our trip was really great, very adventurous. We fit a lot in, we drove a lot, we saw a lot of the country. I enjoyed our time in Scotland. I would love to go back 
because once we drove up to Loch Ness, those Scottish Highlands, that's, I should have said this earlier, we were in the Scottish Highlands for most of the time. That was just mouth open, gorgeous natural beauty. And you could see mountains or you could see rivers. And it was so common to just be driving down the street next to a mountain and oh, there is a gorgeous waterfall. And there's a pull-off park area and people are standing there just looking at the waterfall. I would definitely love, love, love to go back. And if I did, I think instead of spending two days in Edinburgh, I think I would just take the rental car and explore other cities. Like I've kind of, I checked Edinburgh out, the old town, downtown area, and don't need to do it again. I mean, it was nice, but like I said, it, it, it was difficult to feel any bit of the local culture and local heritage when every single other shop is just a souvenir shop. You're not actually seeing, uh, uh, like you're not seeing the artists in the community like we were up in the highlands in that island of Skye. Our kids had a wonderful time. They didn't want to come back home, of course. They wanted to stay and enjoy it, but it's like, nope, you have school. And then that's when we ended up coming home and then entering the fast-paced world of getting everything done before Thanksgiving. Mm, one thing I did check out, uh, oh, the day that we left Edinburgh to go up north, they have craft store, a craft store there, and it's called um, Hobby Craft. And from the internet, I was looking at it, and it looks to be, and now since I had been there, I know, it is if you mixed a Hobby Lobby with a Michaels. So they don't have as much home decor, but in the sense of Hobby Lobby, they do have everything. Every craft that you can think of and large selections. Um, surprisingly, an okay amount of yarn, but more um, fabric, more cross stitch. They had a lot of felt, a lot of jewelry making items. It was a really cool store. And I made a video of me in there showing off all the stuff, what I really liked, talking about the different prices of crafts in Scotland versus the United States and when I listened to it back the music that the store was playing was just too loud I mean I'm talking at a regular volume but you really can't hear me that well so I think I might just show the haul of all the stuff that I bought there and then go over the prices and compare them to US prices but unfortunately, I just, I can't put that video up because it's too difficult to um, hear anything. And then it's like really loud music. Um, when I was in the store, it sounded loud. It didn't sound that loud, but listening back, it's like, oh gosh, yeah, that's, that's not a good video. But yeah, maybe I'll put up um, our time there. Okay, looking at the clock. I need to get going, so I'm gonna cut this off, and I will, I'll finish this, and I'll time lapse it, or no, I'll take a picture of the candlestick when I'm done. But it is almost time for the kids to come home from school, so I need to make sure that I don't miss them at the bus because I'm crafting. If you have any questions or comments, always put it down below. I'm always around crafters. Thank you for watching and crafting with me, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, crafters. Okay, I'm popping back on just to show. Completed the candles and the candlestick. Looks really good. I like all of the fade of the DMCs. This is how's Belle, how Belle is looking, and we just have the hair and the face. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye, crafters.